Welcome to the Elevate Podcast, brought to you by the Registered Master Builders, where we are all about helping you build a better business. We explore the ideas and practices that help us get the best from our businesses, teams, and ourselves. I'm your host, Ryan Castle, along with Dr. Mike Ashby. Each week, we talk to experts, advocates, and business owners in the construction industry to share their knowledge, insights, and experiences to help you build a better business and enjoy a better life. In addition to the podcast, the Registered Master Builders Elevate is also an online learning platform hosting courses, programs, and content that help construction business owners and their staff to build a better business. Now let the business building begin. Hi there, Ryan Castle here from the Breakthrough Company, joined by Dr. Mike Ashby. Welcome along, Mike. Thanks, Ryan. Great to be here. Yeah, looking forward to an interesting conversation today. Look, our purpose here at The Breakthrough is to help business owners unlock the full potential in three areas, themselves, Mm -hmm. their teams, and their business. But over the years, we've worked now with thousands of business owners, and we've really identified uh, four key factors that they've really got to get in play first Mm. before they start making uh, progress anywhere else. And they're probably things that you might go, hmm, I wouldn't have thought that would be the thing that would make the difference. And uh, initially they're almost surprised a bit by some of them. And then when they actually implement it, the change that it creates for them is phenomenal. And I think two of them in particular, which I'll, I'll talk to, if you implemented these two things, you can change your life and your, and your business. Um, refer to them as uh, the, the success principles, and there are there are four that we want to talk about today. And and as as we were talking, I was thinking today, right. which absolutely underlines a couple of those principles. Mm-hmm. And it, you know, as you say, when people kind of start doing it, the transformation they achieve is fantastic. But you know, sometimes you don't quite manage to stick at it because stuff happens, and you know, there's a lot of urgent, and there's a lot of noise, and the whirlwind starts taking you away, and you have all these wonderful intentions. So, so the guy I was talking to today, he knows all this stuff. Mm-hmm. He started doing it because he started with us in October, but since February and over March, it's kind of uh, just not quite. No, I haven't been. To... So, so the two principles that he's in breach of at the moment, right? And he's really suffering yeah. from and he knows he's suffering yeah. because he's had the other side right so one of those principles is limit your hours and and i said to him i reinforced to him that the reason we say limit your hours is because it forces you to do only those things that are important and he said yeah i know only do what only i can do i know i know but because, oh, well, you know, his wife's been away and oh, there's a lot of work on. She's been away for a few weeks. And, you know, so suddenly he's working at nights and he's working on weekends and he's back into projects, back into the hands-on stuff because, oh, who else is there? All those other excuses come into play totally. because he's turned the tap on. Yes. He's turned the yes. tap of his time yes. on. Mm-hmm. And that's just going to flow. Well, you know, it's like, when did your cold water tap last run out of water? It mm-hmm. doesn't, right? You're on mm-hmm. the town water supply. So it's the yeah. same. That's yeah. what's going to happen to him. Yeah. And it's driving him crazy. Yeah. Because he's now, of course, back in the work. Mm-hmm. And suddenly things are going wrong. And he's going, well, why has this big job gone wrong? Well, because you weren't looking at it. Why weren't you looking at it? Because you were too busy doing this little stuff over here. So that power of kind of limiting your hours is still... You know, he's gone away with a bit of a kind of, yeah, just got it, you know, just stop work, just finish, just don't open your, yeah. your laptop yeah. on, on the weekend, don't mm-hmm. open it in the evening, mm. just say no, yeah. just say no. I like to uh, talk to clients that I'm coaching about the, the limiting your hours helps with a, a couple of things immensely. Um, the first one is when you think there's a unlimited resource of time mm-hmm. that is yours, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you continue to find things to do with it. Well, yeah. And I'm yet to meet with a business leader that I've said to them, have you ever run out of things to do? Mm-hmm. I haven't had once mm-hmm. had one of them go, yeah, I've run out of things to do and I've just had all this free time. But here's the funny thing, you know, with this, with the, with my mate today, when we said, so he's been flat out busy and, and he said, actually, as he looks back in the calendar, I said, well, what are you doing? And he said, and he looked back in the calendar and he said, don't know. Mm-hmm. 
No uh -huh. idea. No idea. But I yep. was too busy, too busy to do my development day. Mm -hmm. And that's the second principle. Yep. The second principle is time on the business. Now, he's working with his team, on his team are on the active management program. And he's giving them a hard time about making sure that they do their development time because he knows how important it is that they spend their two hours a week working on development activities. And their hour of the important, very important to kind of close yourself off from all that noise and get the work done. Sadly, not so good at it himself. Mm. Do as I say, not as I yeah, do, maybe approach. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not ideal. And it's such a fundamental. Again, he knows the value of it because he was doing it. And when we looked at the notes from the coach and going mm -hmm. back, said, you know, getting a lot of value out of development day, mon his whole Monday. Didn't go into the office, worked from home, just kind of worked on the big picture stuff, which was around you know, the processes. They've got some great plans. They're going to grow but there's a huge amount of work to do to build the machine to support a business that is twice its current size mm. over the next three years. Right. So there's a massive, you know, what they've mm. got at the moment is baby steps mm -hmm. and they've got a lot of work to do to build the infrastructure and that's development time. So instead of doing that, he's kind of running around doing rats and mice. What was his thing? Why he couldn't do development time next week? And if he's watching this, we've had the discussion, the conversation, and you know, should we name him? No, 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 no. Okay. I wouldn't do it. To him. I wouldn't do it. I felt for him because, you know, he was going to go along to this meeting with this very important client, hadn't seen them for a while, the relationship wasn't quite what it was, and he really felt he should be there. And I said, how much of what you do in that context is around your feeling of your need to be seen? And how much of that's actually true? Because you've got a guy who's perfectly capable of having the meeting, yes. doing the work, completing the, the activity, etc. And so you're you're doing what? But his you know his week is full of these. Are they just excuses, really? And it's it's meant that he's because he hasn't been disciplined about that development time. Mm -hmm. And I, and I know for us, you know, our development time is is sacrosanct. So sacred. People trying to tackle, what do we do? Do not try we to yell. book a meeting in my development time. We Things yell and scream. Oh, yeah. Okay. No, so if we recap the first two principles yep. being limit your hours. So this is putting a time limit around how many hours a week you spend, spend working. Yep. What's our guideline on how many hours? Uh, well, a 40 is the upper limit. Yeah. Well, no, that's not quite. No, 45, I think. 45 yeah. is okay. But 45. that includes development time. Yes, which is an important, yes, important point. I think a big thing when you start putting a uh, set number of hours around is it forces you to solve your current challenges and mm. opportunities using things other than your time. Correct. You Correct. find systems and processes, you delegate, you decide whether that thing is really important Correct. or not. Yeah, right. When you just have this open bucket, you just keep using it up and you ne never, you actually make less progress. As weird as that sounds, mm -hmm. the more hours you work, the less progress you make. That's right. Um, well, so you, that's, just, that's, you just fill your kayak full of water, really. You know, you're yeah, trying to, you think yeah, you're yeah. somewhere, but actually all you're doing is carrying water. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so limit your hours. And the second one, development time. Mm. How would people think about what is activity that I should do in a development time or an on day versus versus the kind of like standard standard? I, work? I, I think the simple distinction is that development time is for creating the future business, and the rest of your time is about doing yesterday's. Yeah, and it's as simple as that, really. So this is the stuff that is important but not urgent. It wouldn't. Nobody would notice if you didn't do it, except that you would never get to where you want to go. You just keep doing more of what you've got. So it represents your next generation of business. And I'm not talking about kind of new products or things like that. I'm just talking about things like process documentation, yep. coaching, yes. training, mm -hmm. uh, planning, thinking about the market, going to see a major prospect, talking to customers about trends in your industry. You know, those kinds of things that you don't have to do any of them. You really don't, except you do. Yeah. It's just that they're not urgent ever. And I think the trap that many owners fall into is they go, oh, I do that stuff all the time. Mm. And yes, maybe you do, but you don't do it with conscious thought. Mm. Mm. So what we say is you've got to be taking, look, somewhere we, we recommend to our leaders, um, you know, two hours a, a week in this Minimum. through to our, our owners where we're going, you should be spending a day or more a week. Yeah. Mike and I both spend a day a week each working development on mm. time and it's mm. all about the future state of the of the business. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so limit your hours somewhere between two hours and a um, a day a week on. 
and what are the essential things we've got to have in place to set up our development day? A calendar. Yep. So we block it out in the mm-hmm. diary. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, determination. Determination. What else? I think you've got to communicate to your team that you are unavailable for that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. There is you, the email gets turned off, the phone gets turned off. Uh, you, you know, as you say, sacrosanct time. You do not allow anything to come in into that. I, I like to use the analogy that if if this was a close family member's funeral, mm-hmm. you would attend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you should be thinking about your development time in the same way. Give it the same respect that you just mm. do not let that time time go. When someone goes, oh, can I just put that one meeting in there? No, you've got another four days in the week exactly. to, to book that in, exactly. but not on not on that time. Okay. Um, the thing, the uh, the metaphor I use is this is like a rock in a stream, right? If you throw a stone into a stream, the stream just covers it and you can't see it. When you plonk a great big rock there, the water has to work around it. Oh, wow. So for us, development day is the rock in the stream. It's priority one. Everything else has to flow around. And you just got to take that attitude to your time. You just got to give yourself some respect. So our other tips would be your development time, you shouldn't do it where you normally work. So if you're in an office yep. where people can walk up to your desk or walk into yep. your office and, and interrupt all the time. So often it's working from home. Yep. If you've got a, a good work environment at home, it might be going to a shared workspace, lots of uh, bank partners, et cetera, now offer mm. spaces for their clients to go and operate in. Those kind of places are a great place to do your development days. For sure. Okay. For sure. So limit your hours development days. What are our other two principles we well, should the, be thinking um, about? The third one, which again was relevant today, was the set personal goals and and actually the problem we had with this guy's personal goal was he looked at it and said you know it's just not that exciting it's just something that is a good idea I'd quite like to do it but it doesn't really kind of fill me with joy yeah it doesn't excite me doesn't yep. spark the joy yep. as, as Marie Kondo would say so the reason for having a personal goal that does excite you uh, or at least well there's, there's there's a variety of levels but but in the first instance a personal goal that inspires you means that it's something that captures your energy and captures your attention and that's the place where you can recharge from work so the kind of commercial reason for having a personal goal if you like is because that's the place where you recharge we should all have a place or an activity or something that we do that enables us to step away from the business stop the kind of mental chatter that goes on about the business and be mindful and present and engaged Mm -hmm. in something that we love to do with people that we love to be with. So that's the reason for setting a personal goal. The other piece of it is, if it's not that so much, if it's maybe a personal goal around, I mean, my current personal goal is is four hours exercise a week. And I hit that reasonably regularly. The practice, the discipline of hitting that when I don't want to, of when I'd rather not, of when there are other things, it's really good. It's really useful. It's kind of, it's developing my willpower, making, you know, enabling me to make the choices I want to make and stick to them. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens when I come to come to work as well. I have Correct. to make those choices. Yep. I have to use that willpower mm-hmm. muscle. So personal goals, we use almost as a proxy or a training ground. Training ground is great, Tim. Yeah, a training ground for developing your change muscle. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. And certainly leads into the uh, work that Carol Dweck has done around yep. growth mindset. Yep. And there's a, one of my all, all-time favorite TED Talks is the Angela Lee Duckworth one yep. on grit. Yep. So that willpower, grit, resilience piece. Mm. And they have researched thousands of people and all sorts of things from military academies to spelling bees. Mm-hmm. And they found the ones that succeed are the ones that have grit, resilience, yeah. uh, willpower. So yeah. massive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So set personal goals. Set personal goals. Uh, and then the, the last one is is actually usually the one we start with, isn't it? Correct. Because And it's a fundamental value of ours as a, as a business, but it's also something that changes the way people think about themselves and their business. And that is health, relationships, and work in that order. And the reality is, and you kind of go, oh, yeah, well, that makes sense. But actually, so many business owners have work, work, <laughs> oh, and work, Yeah. yeah. Or maybe you know down there somewhere yeah. they might go work work in relationships but they don't do their health piece mm. and they wonder why and they're kind of tired they wonder why actually their work is not satisfying their work is not enjoyable and their relationships are a bit fractious and basically your team are just waiting for when you go on holiday because when you come back you'll be a pleasant person mm-hmm. and that's because you're too tired and yeah. that's because you are not taking care of your health mm. so 
If you don't take care of your health, your relationships won't work and, and, your, and your business will suffer. It's, yeah. it's as simple as that, isn't yeah. it? And when we talk about health, we talk about two aspects. We talk about the physical uh, health and well-being, but certainly the mental wealth mm. is the mm. uh, term we like to think about. So what are you doing to recharge your mind as well as uh, keep your body in, yeah. in good shape yeah. and, and moving yeah. forward? Uh, look, we had um, Will Allen, great uh, client of ours. Yes. Yeah. Um, he has transformed his life and his business by literally just giving focus in that order, mm. going health, family and work. He's uh, He won't mind me sharing this because he uh, has has previously he's gone from like 108 kilos to 88 mm. kilos he told me um, kilos ago yeah. um, he says his mental alertness because he's in so much better physical condition and, mm. and mental wealth is great he's put active effort into his relationships both with his wife and his children um, and and broader and what do you know his business is charging mm. that mm. was not accidental no you know it's really the getting those in that order is what yeah. makes the difference yeah I, know, I remember a guy saying to me when he said he said Look, Mike, I've had, you know, I've had six weeks off this year already and it was only August. Uh, my relationship is better. I've lost 10 kilograms. I just competed my first half marathon. Oh, and by the way, my business has grown 25% this year. <laughs> and exactly right. You know, I think whether he knew it or not, that was why. So it's not a case of, you know, taking care of our health and taking care of our relationships when we've made enough money in the business to enable that. It's the other way around. Take care of your health, your energy. Take care of your relationships, which is your emotional energy. Your business will feel better to you. You will enjoy it more. You will engage in it more. You will be more positive. It is about energy and not in any kind of crystal dangling way. It really is. You know, when you don't have your health, when you don't, when your relationships aren't working, if you've been in that situation, you know just how tough it is. It just feels like trying to run through a field of melted marshmallow. It just doesn't work, right? <laughs> Not that good. Not that good. Not that good. So get your health right, take care of your relationships, and your business will fly. No question. Fabulous. So guys, quick recap. Limit your hours. Development day, spend time on the business somewhere between two and a full two hours and a full day a week. Set personal goals because it uh, also helps with that recharge yeah. piece, but importantly, it builds the willpower muscle uh, that we need in business yeah. to survive and health, family, and work in that order. Look, if you'd like a, a guided experience on exactly how those principles work and how you'd like to implement those or could implement those in, in your own life, go to thebreakthrough.co and have a look at our business freedom plan. Uh, we have an online course there that helps people, mm -hmm. let's lead you through this and helps you embed that into your life. Uh, and it just creates phenomenal, phenomenal change. If you know someone who should be hearing this message, please share out the podcast, send them across to us to have a listen. We're on a mission to change a million lives. Thanks very much. Thank you.